G'day everyone. Today we're going to have a look at Tor converters. We'll talk about what they are, what applications we use them in, we'll talk about how they work, and we'll pull this one apart and have a look at all the internal features. So let's talk converters. Okay, firstly, what is the torque converter? Well, putting it very simply, it is a non-mechanical link between the engine and the transmission. It allows the engine to continue to idle while the transmission is stationary. We do not stall the engine. It also allows us to have a little bit of slip and it gives us a small amount of torque multiplication to the transmission when we need it. This particular one is a fairly large torque converter. Uh, it is a sealed unit, a one-use unit. It's welded shut and it mounts to the engine via a flex plate. There's a flex plate that mounts to the torque converter and mounts to the crankshaft of the engine with a ring on it so we can use it for starting the engine. We do not need a flywheel in these applications because the torque converter is heavy enough to act as that rotating mass. It's also balanced for that reason. The flex plate that it mounts to allows a little bit of thrust backwards and forwards from the transmission so the torque converter can float ever so slightly on that flex plate. Uh, this one comprises of the drum housing. We have a stator in the middle, which is usually stationary. We have an impeller driven by the engine and we have a turbine which drives the transmission. We'll cut it open and have a look at them parts a little bit later. It also has this spline right here. Now this spline usually would have a gear on it and this gear drives the transmission charge pump. Now the transmission charge pump it provides lubrication and cooling for the transmission, that is oil. It also provides oil for the engagement of the clutches and it provides the oil to fill the torque converter so we can operate it. If we're to tow an automatic transmission and the engine is not running it means that the transmission charge pump is also not providing oil to the transmission. Now this is the reason that we should not tow an automatic vehicle. If the wheels are on the ground and turning the transmission, the torque converter charge pump is not operational and it's not providing oil to lubricate the bearings in the transmission or cool them. So as we tow the transmission, the bearings aren't being lubricated and we can destroy the transmission very quickly. When we tow an automatic transmission, it's very important to either remove the drive shafts driving the transmission or remove the wheels that are driving the transmission from the ground. Okay, so my fan theory is, we have an engine here which is plugged in and turned on, that'll be this fan, and we have the input to the transmission here, which is not plugged in, and this will be driving the rest of our driveline. And this makes up our torque converter. If we turn on this fan here, so our engine is idling, we'll find that this fan here, the input to our transmission, will start to turn. Now we can put the brakes on, and we can stop the transmission. We are now stopped, but the engine continues to idle. If we allow ourselves to, to start rolling again, you can see here that our transmission input is turning and it's turning in the same direction as the engine and eventually it will reach the same speed as the engine. If we increase the speed of the engine, we increase the speed of the inputs to the transmission via the torque converter. That's how the torque converter works very, very basically. It's basically a fluid coupling and it's put simply, if we stop the engine, the torque converter will slow down as they travel in the same direction and they'll both come to a stop. There is no mechanical link between the two fans. This fan is only driving this fan through air direction. The torque converter uses hydraulic oil. So that is the very basics of how the torque converter works. Without a stator in between the two, strictly speaking, that is actually a fluid coupling. Once we add the stator, we can call it a torque converter. Once we cut this open, I'll show you what the stator looks like and we'll discuss it at that point. Okay, just before I go ahead and cut this open and have a look inside, I was just gonna have a chat about torque converter stall. Now the idea of stalling a torque converter is bringing the engine RPM up as high as we possibly can before the machine walks through the brakes or the engine runs out of horsepower. It's an important diagnostic tool. What we do is we put the machine in gear, activate the brakes and bring the engine RPM up to a specified limit. If the engine won't reach the specified limit, we're low on power. If the engine goes over the specified limit, we may have a slipping transmission. If we don't get to the specified limit before the machine walks through the brakes, we may also have an issue with the brakes. So the torque converter stall test is a very important diagnostic tool. It'll tell us the health of the engine, the transmission, and the brakes of a machine. Okay, well, a couple of grinding discs later and it is cut open, so we can reveal what's inside. I definitely feel like we're revealing some sort of dish. So here we have the impeller, which is connected to the drum. We have the stator in the middle, and we also have the turbine, which drives the transmission. As you can see, the turbine is free, as is the stator, and the impeller is mounted to the drum itself. 
Now this apart, we can see the exact same theory we had with the two fans. We have the impeller, which is driving the turbine. The impeller is mounted to the engine and turns with the engine, and the turbine is free to drive the transmission. You may notice that the impeller is actually on the transmission side, and that's every torque converter I've ever pulled apart, it works like that. We have the engine, we have the drum, and then the impeller is on the transmission side, and the turbine is actually on the engine side, and the shaft goes through the two. So the shaft will travel through the stator here. As we can see, we have the stator, and it drives it through the impeller as well, out to the transmission. That's just how they are built. Now, as we can see here, unlike the two fans we had earlier, we do have a stator. Now this sits between the impeller and the turbine, and it makes the torque converter more efficient. And the way it does that is it stays stationary. As the impeller turns, it directs oil to the turbine to turn it, and any oil coming off the turbine goes through the stator and gets redirected onto the impeller. It redirects oil, hits the impeller, and goes back to the turbine again. It creates a bit of a swirl, a bit of turbulence within the torque converter, and that oil is always reused and pushed back onto the turbine, making it very, very efficient. It makes it much more efficient than the fluid coupling that we saw earlier. Now, as I mentioned, the stator is stationary, hence the term stator. But when we use these on trucks and other things like that that will have a high ground speed, we'll have a one-way clutch on the stator. Now, the idea of the one-way clutch is when the turbine is matching or going faster than the impeller, i.e. we're going down a hill, the stator tends to get in the way. If it's trying to redirect oil from the turbine to the impeller, but the turbine is traveling as fast or faster than the impeller, it actually just gets in the way. It creates too much heat and turbulence within the torque converter and will actually slow the machine down as it goes down a hill. So what the stator then does, as we start to increase ground speed over the engine speeds, it will actually rotate in the opposite direction so it doesn't redirect that oil to the impeller. Not until we accelerate again will it remain stationary when the impeller increases in speed above the speed of the turbine. So we will find a one-way clutch in anything that has a high ground speed. This particular one does not have a one-way clutch. This is off a machine that does not need a high ground speed, but some of these will have a one-way clutch designed just to do that. Also, when it comes to vehicles and machines that have a high ground speed, we'll also find that the turbine will have its own lockup clutch as well. Now, usually the turbine lockup clutch will come engaged after second or third gear on, on a machine or even in top gear on a vehicle. And the idea is that once you get a lot of speed up, you're doing 100 kilometers an hour on the road, there is no need for the torque converter to be doing the slip and creating torque into the transmission that we just don't need. So what it will do, there'll be a clutch behind the turbine and that will lock the turbine to the drum and the turbine, and therefore the input shaft of the transmission, will do the same speed as the torque converter. The clutch basically locks the, the uh, turbine to this drum and it all rotates as one. Once we drop out of top gear, the lockup clutch will disengage and we can start to slip again as we require more torque. If we're going up a hill or we're towing, we'll tend to find that the, the torque converter lockup clutch will not be engaged. And that's a lot of the reason why a lot of manufacturers will say, do not tow in top gear in an automatic. Not only is it an overdrive, but also the torque converter lockup tends to be engaged in top gear and we will tend to burn out the torque converter lockup clutch if we are working with a lot of load and towing up big hills. So make sure we don't tow in top gear if we have a lot of load on the vehicle and we're heading up a hill. Okay, lastly we have the impeller clutch. Now the idea behind the impeller clutch is it's a clutch that allows the engine RPM to stay high but the impeller to slow down as we require it. Now usually we require this when we're coming up to a pile of dirt in a loader, we want the engine RPM for the hydraulic breakout, but we don't want to spin the tires. So we have a clutch that can modulate how much the impeller is going to get from the engine and how much the engine is going to drive the hydraulics. We can come in at full RPM, grab our bucket of dirt without spinning the wheels because the impeller is going to slip with inside the housing. Now, usually, like I said, we found that on front end loaders. We find trucks and high speed equipment having the torque converter lockup and we have the one way stator in trucks as well. Very rarely will we find all three of these elements inside one torque converter. They are very different applications. Auxiliary machines, low speed machines will have the impeller clutch. High speed machines will have the turbine lockup. And the one way stator is usually found in high speed machines as well. This particular torque converter has none of those. We have a turbine without a lockup. We have a fixed stator and we also have a fixed impeller. Okay, well that is pretty much it for torque converters. There is one more type of torque converter that's out there and it's known as a torque divider. Now that is usually used on track type tractors and bulldozers where we need a lot more torque multiplication coming from the engine. We're gonna be pushing a lot of dirt and we're moving very slowly. That's a subject for another video once I get hold of a torque divider, but that is a torque converter. They're pretty much the same whether we're talking about a forklift, a passenger car, a truck or a loader. They all have the same elements. They all have the same idea behind them. They just vary in size and they have different clutches within them as we discussed. 
other than that, thank you very much for watching.